Good afternoon. There it is again. This is uh, Alyssa Coin and Currency coming at you. It's um, Friday afternoon and it's a beautiful day out there. The sun is shining. Oh, that's a Friday. The school teachers must be so excited now. They got three days coming off. God love them. Anyways, uh, today we're having... I guess we can call a PVC 101, a little course in polyvinyl chloride. Um, how to start here, PVC damage. PVC, PVC damage is big in the coins, and they can destroy a coin, they can degrade a coin, they can make a beautiful coin look ugly, as you'll see here shortly. But uh, PVC damage. Uh, coins is the result of improperly storing coins in soft plastic flips. These are plastic flips. They would be soft. This is this is a this is the new kind, the mylar one, which we'll explain a little bit. But the plastic flips that are very very. Um, oh, let me get in front. I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking at it here, and I in front of the camera. How about me? I'll be all right. <clears throat> I guess I'm excited that it's Friday. But this is a mylar flip. It's very brittle. You only get so many flips out of it before it'll break in here because it's definitely it's not soft. This is the kind that you want to use to store your coins in. The soft, uh, pliable ones that are real nice to handle, no good. Bad, bad, bad for the coin. They do cause coin. That causes damage. Tape residue causes damage, which we'll show you here here shortly but um, anyways this causes the uh, the residue that deposits to appear on the coin surface copper over here which we're going to show you shortly uh, is the most vulnerable to PVC damage followed by silver and then gold and platinum and thank God you ain't gonna see no gold and platinum today from my point of view anyways thank goodness for that because then I'd be showing you my uh, <laughs> runations. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, PVC damage appears as green, milky, gray streaks, or a haze, which I have all. Um, I have them all here for you. I kind of learned the hard way and and the lucky, the unlucky way. Okay, now it looks like okay. Okay, in severe cases. It looks like tiny green blobs on the surface of the coin. Oh, I forgot to mention PVC stands for polyvinyl chloride. It's an, it's an additive used in uh, plastics to make the material more pliable and less brittle, which I explained to you on this little bad boy just a few seconds ago. And in coin collecting, uh, PVC is most frequently encountered in the clear flat plastic flips, which we looked at earlier, in, the, which, in which the coins are stored. As a general rule, the softer, more pliable the flip is, the more PVC it contains. The hard, stiff, brittle type flips made of mylar, again, which uh, we looked at here earlier. They're the ones that they don't they don't contain any PVC. They're the ones you want to use. Um, also, PVC has a distinctive smell, sort of like the smell you get when you open up a cheap plastic toy. In mild cases of PVC contamination, you might not be able to detect the smell. But if you ever smell PVC after removing a coin from a soft plastic flip, even though you don't see the contamination on the coin, you should treat the coin for PVC damage anyway as a precaution because it's probably on the coin. Uh, now we're going to get into maybe like uh, PVC damage 102 if you want to take it this step further is uh, removing the PVC residue is simple. But if it left untreated, it will eventually eat into the surface of the coin. Merely taking the coin out of the offending flip isn't enough. Once the PVC has begun, it's begun. The acidic PVC cycle will continue to degrade the coins until, the, until you permanently remove the PVC. Uh, removing it's quite easily. I've never done it. 
I don't think I plan on doing it. Um, if I have any coins, some of these I'm, I'm thinking about maybe sending to NCS, National Conservation Specialist, or maybe I think they're called. I'm sure they want an arm and a leg for it, but um, right now, plus it's also a learning experience. And I know if I do it myself, I'm only going to ruin the coin because I know how my luck is. But anyways, they say it's easy. It only takes about 10 minutes. That's a uh, prep and clean up time. But anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you before I start looking at the coins. Um, if you want, if you want to take a shot at it after looking at these coins, uh, you got to have a pair of gloves and eye protection because you're going to use acetone, and acetone is a powerful chemical chemical that's extremely flammable. And if you ever had used nail polish remover, you know you know that what it smells like and and what it could do to your eyes you don't want to do it in the kitchen or anywhere there's an open flame is present because it's extremely flammable it doesn't burn the skin i guess that's why they use it for nail polish removal and uh but you should avoid unnecessary contact um you want to use a stainless steel or a glass container you don't want to use plastic because it'll eat the plastic so plastics nothing plastics please because that's the problem we're having we don't want to make it worse, but uh, pour a small amount of the acetone into the container, the small stainless steel bowl or glass um, jar, mason jar or something. You only need about a quarter to a half ounce if you're using a small glass or a tiny jar. Uh, you, don't, you only need enough to cover the coin, uh, probably like a quarter inch. Um, gently place the coin with the PVC residue, residue into the dish. Swirl the acetone around for about 30 seconds to a minute. Um, if both sides of the coins are affected, then you probably want to flip the coin over. Uh, let's see here. Then we're gonna. Uh, you probably want to yeah take the coin out. You want to take the coin out. Let it air dry. If the uh, PVC residue is still present, continue with. Um, um, Q-tips, <clears throat> Q-tips, yes, Q-tips, not plastic Q-tips, uh, the kips with the cardboard, cotton swabs with the cardboard, not plastic, we don't want plastic, remember that. Anyways, um, if, uh, where was I, oh, the Q-tips, then you want to dip the Q-tip into the uh, acetone and lay the Q-tip on the coin and do not um, swipe it. You are dab it. You want to, um, how do you say, you want to roll it. Roll it would be a way to say it. And you want to make sure you got a steady hand. You don't want to scratch the surface of the coin because I give the coin hairlines. If you, if you scrub or suede, you're going to give the coin hairlines and that's defeating the purpose. But uh, roll it across. If it's a lot of uh, PVC, you may have to change the uh, swab once or twice. If it's not, you might get away with just changing it once. Maybe a, a, a complete turn across the coin and a complete turn back. If it's a little bit, you may get a, a third turn. If not, you would just keep it to the down and back and then change the swab down and back. And um, use them as new until the coin appears clean. If, it's, if you're going this deep into it, like the second or third time with the cotton swabs, I, I think the damage is bad. That's just me guessing. I don't have enough of experience to know any better, but um, that that that's what I would say if the PVC is that that stubborn. We're not. We're, they have professionals out there that's willing to pay pay the twenty or thirty dollars to save the coin because we're dealing with expensive coins here. But anyways, if um, if the uh, coin is clean after that, then you want to dispose of the acetone. Don't don't throw it down the sink. Um, I don't know, burying it on the backyard. I don't even know if that's a real good thing to do. But you could be if you have plastic pipes and you're pouring it down the sink, you may be creating another problem. That's my opinion, and it's, we're full of opinions. Remember, everybody has an opinion, just like we all have a you know what. <laughs> now here's a copper coin I'm showing you um, I don't have the best eyes I'm up in age and I don't know how to work a camera 
But this coin is heavily PVC. It looks blue to me inside my viewfinder here. But it's green. That's green. I think you can see it at that, that angle. And this is a 1917 year penny. So what a, what a waste on this coin. What a shame. Both sides, obverse and reverse. And here we have a 1919. Another shame. Uh, these came out of... This ain't too bad because this came out of my uncle's... I guess we call them hoards. I hear that used a lot. He used to throw his coins in uh, bo boxes and cans. And he wasn't lucky enough to throw that, that there... One expensive one away. That's for darn sure. He saved these, though. Save these. Nothing else. He gave me uh, the chance to educate some people out there who aren't familiar with PVC and what causes it. Plus, they were stored in an attic that went to 100 degrees in the summer and minus one in the winter. So the variations of the temperature change isn't too good for a coin also. There are the pennies. Here, we're going to show you this one, the Susan B. Anthony. And here, it's tough to tell because it's still in the packaging. The, this was a little bit better packaging by the, uh, the mint. But still, there's no coin luster. They're hazy. Get them out of the way. And now uh, here we have, and I learned this one the hard way. This one here is a Liberty half dollar which I purchased from a dealer who told me that that green wasn't wasn't PVC and then when I got home I started researching it and we sort of have a disagreement between me and him and he should have seen it my way because now you just end up bad mouthing them on, uh, over the internet I guess but here you can see there I mean it's a beau it's really <coughs> It really looks nice. It's kind of dull the coin, but the green, the green around the edges of Miss Liberty and the olive branches. I mean, the coin is very nice. It's not very shiny. I don't know if, if what they call conserving the coin is going to bring that shine back or not. But this may be one I'm going to be interested in trying because I do like. I, I do really enjoy. The Liberty Half Dollars. They, they're some of my favorite, if not my favorite. The Reverse, now the Reverse doesn't have any of it on it. The Reverse is clean. Very nice Reverse. But here now, we have a 1973 Ike. And this surprises me because this is, this is a hard plastic. And um, let's see if it'll come out of there. This, this I won at, um, I won this as a door prize. <laughs> Figures, right? Doesn't even want to come out. First time it's coming out since I, I won it. But I see here, if you look at it, should have left it in there. There's hazing there. I think you can see it there around the front of Ike's face and in his back. It's a it's a white white milking haze, white milky haze. You can see that. What a shame! What a nice coin this would have been. Now the back doesn't. Oh, maybe the back does have it. The way I'm looking at it now, when I look this way, not as bad as the front, but it's there. And this is a hard plastic. This surprises me that um, unless it's been opened and changed, I'd have to look at it. A door prize, you know what I mean? Who knows what you're getting when you get a door prize? Rich, you won a Eisenhower um, proof dollar. Not, we don't even know if it's silver or not. It is from the San Francisco Mint, nor do we care. Now, here's a 1971. This will come from my uncle's. It's a uh, Ike 71 silver dollar in this plastic right here, detrimental to a coin. And you can see, there's no, it's all hazed up. Front, back, the ruination of a beautiful coin. 
I'm assuming this is mint state. I hope for the coin it's mint state. Oh, it would say silver on it. Uncirculated. It says right there, uncirculated. Read, read before you talk sometimes, Richard. Beautiful. And then uh, we also have here now, finally, will be a Morgan dollar. And I believe this, to me, when I look at it, as you see that line straight down the front of her face, it, it's a little bit blotchy from the side. Let's see if we can get the blotches. Down at her chin, up her jaw, I should say. Not her chin, her jaw and her neck. You see that? Uh, um, this right here. Let's see now. Let's see if we get the angle. I had it before. Then I had to go reach for the pencil pen, right? Anyways, here's the line I'm talking about. But right in here, there's a... Um, there's darkness there. I think you can see it now. I think that's tape residue. It's too straight. And it's kind of bumpy. And tape is also a no-no. That will cause PVC. So I think there. A list of coin and currency. Giving you one, two, three, four. Four different views, five different views of possible PVC contamination, and what to do if you come, if you have it, and you want to either you can fix it yourself, send it away. I know Annex will do it. Annex is the cheapest. You send it to them. I think they're fifteen dollars a coin, and there's no membership. Annex is very good. Annex is very, very, very good company. Well, well worth. Um, dealing with them and their quality is probably surpassed by no one and then I know NCS also does it they have a registration or a join up fee and I think they're 20 I'm not sure the prices because like I said I never did it but I will be looking into it and they deal with NGC so if you send it to them they will send it to NGC for grading if you'd like and on that um, we're going to end this presentation I hope you enjoyed it and again we're Alyssa Coins and Currency we're at AlyssaCoins.com our website it's a wonderful website if you'd like to go and play it a visit you'll see some beautiful top shelf coins this video will be there with amongst many of our other videos that we do and some of them are educational and some of them are just plain some of them Thank you much and so long.